Hello, and today is my top 10 sunscreens, which I've been asked to do. And uh, this summer I'll definitely do more sunscreen reviews. But anyway, I thought I would do my top 10 and then I've got a few that I recommend you avoid. So uh, let me just get started with a good all around sunscreen. I've got some good ones that are tinted, some good ones that are chemical, some good ones for oily skin and some good ones for uh, those with drier skin. So this one's a good all around sunscreen. I really like it, the Pharmacy Beauty Green Screen. Uh, this does a nice job providing a good uh, physical barrier and also doesn't have a ton of white cast, but also plays well with a bunch of other products. And so far, I really like it. It's great for those. I've got dry skin, but I've got a lot of friends with those with more uh, oily skin who also like this one. And uh, just massages in very easily and provides a good SPF 30. So this is a good one. It's very hydrating, but it works well under foundation or primers. So uh, this is a really good one. Really like it. If you haven't tried it, uh, it's well worth checking out. Uh, another good one. Uh, this one's more towards those with dry skin. And this is the Paula's Choice Resist uh, Skin Restoring Moisturizer, which is uh, got an SPF of 50 in there, and it's a chemical sunscreen. So if you're not a big fan of the chemical sunscreens, that uh, could be this might not be the best one for you. But I like it because it just works flawlessly under foundation and primer uh, over the underneath those things. So and it's invisible since it's chemical, and it also is more hydrating. So this is a good one. Paula's Choice. Most of their sunscreens from the brand are. Great. So I couldn't do any list without including Paula's Choice or Clinique and a few other brands. So that's also a good one. Another one I like, uh, and I have to get the next bigger bottle, is the Clinique Pep Start uh, SPF 50. Uh, this is a good one. It's uh, very uh, kind of melts into your skin. And this one is also great for those with more oily skin or dry skin. And uh, I like it that it's a little bit of a higher SPF of 50, uh, although the recommended level is 30. You don't want to go below 30 on a daily basis. 30 and up is where you want to be. So uh, an SPF of 50 is even more of a bonus. So I tend to take this little bottle with me to travel. So I like it for that, especially if I'm going to be outside or going somewhere where it's hot. That's a, it's a nice one. So this one is another good one if you have very dry skin or if you are just looking for something that's kind of you can use and leave out a foundation and that is the Peter Thomas Roth Max Mineral Naked SPF 45 and this one is a physical sunscreen but it's super hydrating uh, and it also has a bit of a skin tint in there so uh, I like to use this on days when I'm kind of being a little bit more minimal and I don't want to wear a lot of foundation because once it blends in uh, it kind of covers up minimal imperfections and uh, kind of soaks into skin. So it doesn't have a white cast, but uh, it's tinted, so which is nice. And it's got an SPF of 45, which is good. So if you have dry skin, this is a good one. If you have more oily skin, I would probably not recommend it just because it is so hydrating. Uh, but overall, this is a good one. I love it. I reach for it all the time. So uh, another good one is from Casa Rex. And that is their Aloe Soothing sun, sun Cream. And it does have a very small amount of fragrance, which dissipates almost immediately. So if you have very, very sensitive skin, uh, this might not be the best option. But uh, if you're not sensitive to a very small amount of fragrance, it's a good one because it's hydrating. Uh, it works well under foundations. And uh, if you're looking at the Casarex brand, this would be their sunscreen that I would recommend because they've come up with a few other ones that aren't so great. But I know this is a lot of people's um, HG foundation. So uh, seems to work well. And this one I can say if you've got oily or dry skin, it seems to work well for both types. So let me, let me wipe off my hand really quick. I've got my Sephora little watermelon cleansing wipes which is what I use to kind of wipe off after a review. So anyway, just want to do that. Uh, so another good one that I really like, and I've just gotten this recently, uh, is the, I, how do you pronounce it? Make Prem? Make P-R-E-M? Uh, it's K-Beauty brand, uh, and this is their uh, Reduce Heat uh, UV Defense Me. Reduce Heat. But... Anyway, sorry. 
But this is a good one. It's an SPF of 50, so it's a little bit higher than uh, most, but uh, this one works well underneath foundations and uh, doesn't have any white cast and absorbs quickly. So this one, if you have more oily skin or dry skin, this one seems to work well. And uh, if I'm just doing things uh, working or just not being outside a lot, this is a good one. It's a little bit more uh, elegant than some other ones, but it also provides a high level of sun, sun protection. And yeah, so I'm really glad I picked this one up and I found it to be quite affordable because this bottle is 2.53 ounces instead of a lot of the other ones are one ounce or a little bit more than one ounce. This one's a little bit better of a deal. So uh, anyway, that's a good one to check out for normal and oily skin. And let's see, another one that I really like is the Volition Beauty Prismatic Luminizing Shield. And this one's got an SPF of 50 and it works well underneath foundation and uh, it does a great job pretty much becoming invisible underneath uh, foundation. So, and it's uh, a little bit physical and a little bit of a chemical sunscreen as well. And I found it just to work well and it absorbs quickly. And uh, I don't know, when people ask for a recommendation, this is one of the first ones I, I shout out to you guys because I find if you're newer to trying sunscreens, this is one that people tend to like and not find it to be uh, too much of any one thing. So, and it seems to work well for oily skin and a dry skin. And especially if you're someone that likes to use it underneath foundation, it's a good one. So I don't know how many have I done? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've got like 50 more. So stay tuned. <laughs> anyway, so the Pacifica SPF 30 Coconut Glow. This is a good one if you want to look a little bit tan and you want a little bit of sun protection. Uh, it's not a self tanner, but it's tinted. But when you rinse your face off, uh, you won't have any uh, of the tint left over. But this one also works well in the summer. Oops, I didn't shake it better well enough. Uh, in the summer, if I just want a sunscreen that's got a little bit of a glow to it, uh, this is a good one, but definitely shake it up well. Let's try that again. Let's see. So, so it's got a little bit of a bronzing effect and uh, it just gives you a little bit of a subtle tan and protects you your skin as well. So I wish, you know what I haven't found though, is a SPF that is also a self tanner. There's gotta be some out there, but I don't think I've tried any. Anyway, and this one is also much more affordable. It tends to work a little bit better on those with uh, drier skin because it tends to be a little bit more emollient and it's got a, it's got a very high level of zinc, 20%. So. Uh, it does have a little of a scent, which is a vanilla scent, so it's not bothersome as much, and it dissipates pretty quickly. So uh, if you're looking for a little bit more of a glow and sun protection, this is a good one. So like that. Let's see. The Drunk Elephant. This is good for dry skin. If you have oily skin, I have a feeling you're probably not going to like this one as much. The Umbra Tint Daily Defense with SPF 30. Uh, I find this to be super hydrating. It also has a tint to it, but not as much of a tint as the uh, Pacifica sunscreen. And it's a good product. It works well with other Drunk Elephant products. And uh, if you use foundation, I found it to work well underneath uh, some matte, more matte foundations. If you use it over a more hydrating foundation, it can have a tendency to look a little too greasy. But if you have super dry skin, uh, this is also a good one. This one also has zinc oxide at 20%. It's pretty similar, in my opinion, to the Pacific one, except this one is fragrance-free. So if you have super sensitive skin, uh, this is probably so far out of most of the ones I've reviewed thus far. This would probably be the one I would recommend if you have very sensitive skin. So that is a good one. And let me wipe off my hands one more time. And I've got a few left and then a few that I recommend potentially avoiding. And uh, another good one, Clinique came up on the list a couple times, is their Super City Sunblock. This is a great one for a lot of people. And if you um, have drier skin, this is good. Or if you have oily skin, it's oil-free, so it's not super hydrating. But this one works well under foundations. Uh, it's probably one of my, my more uh, often reached for sunscreens, just because it's reliable. It's got a decent uh, protection of 40 and it definitely takes a little bit of time to blend in and a lot of days if I don't feel like wearing a foundation I'll reach for this one 
So a little bit of it tends to, to go a longer way, which be careful with sunscreen with that. But uh, this is a good one. I know a lot of people love it. Uh, I reviewed it, and I get comments all the time from people that say this is my go-to. I love it. I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Anyway, so oh, another good one is the Kula. Kula makes a lot of different sunscreens. They've shown up on this specific list in the good category, and then there's one to avoid, but this is a good one. It's the Unscented Matte Sunscreen, and this one I travel with. I've got another bottle that's traveled with me everywhere, and it works well uh, in all kinds of places, but uh, Kula makes a lot of good sunscreens, and they've got a few to avoid, so with this line, you want to be careful, but they've got some of the best and then some of the not-so-good ones, so... Uh, that's another good one. And I see that the post lady just dropped off a box. And I think this is a box I've been waiting for. And it's got a few uh, sunscreens, I believe, in here. And these are some ones that I've heard have been like total holy grails for others. And uh, I haven't tried them yet, but let's see if that's what it is. I've been waiting forever for this box. It's from Japan, so I guess that's probably why it took a little longer to get here. Let's see. Not the best with opening stuff. Let's see, I've got some Japanese newspaper. That's kind of funny. Okay, let's see. I'm excited. So, these are a few sunscreens that I've heard are like holy grails. And I had to pick them up. Biore. Japanese Biore. They don't sell these like in the U.S., but it's their uh, essence sunscreen, water gel, and uh, anyway, so now I'm excited to try them because these might appear on the list next time. We'll see. If I can figure out the ingredients list, I'm not sure, but a lot of people have mentioned that these are some of their HGs, so definitely going to be trying these out soon. So thank you, Post Lady. Okay, a couple more. Tatcha. This one's great, especially for those with oily skin, uh, but tends to be a chemical and a, and a physical sunscreen, and it works well. It's got a little bit of fragrance in there, so if you have very, very sensitive skin, it might be one to avoid. But overall, this one's very elegant. It works well under foundation, and it's a good one. But if you're going to pick it up, don't pick it up at Sephora. Pick it up at... Check it out online because I believe Costco sells it for way more affordable prices. So that might be... I don't know if you have a membership or not, but I thought I would point that out. And uh, I w had a big bottle of this, and I went through it, and now it's my tiny little bottle of the Josie Marin SPF 47, and I love it. I got to pick up the next big bottle, but all I had left was one of the little bottles, but this is a very good one. I haven't reviewed it yet. I'll definitely do so uh, this spring. I'll probably do another sunscreen week, so this is a good one. I know a lot of people have asked about it, and if you're thinking about picking up, it's great for dry skin. Those with more oily skin might not like it as much, but uh, if you have drier skin, this is a good one, so... And then I've got a few to avoid. And like I mentioned before, Kula shows up on the list. The Sun Silk Drops, they work well. It's like invisible. Uh, however, it has a lot of fragrance in it. And uh, fragrance just is a no-no. But it's very elegant in the way it works. And the bottle's beautiful. And the dispensing is beautiful. But it's just too fragrant, in my opinion, to recommend. So that is one, in my opinion, to avoid. Although it works well under foundation and things. So... And another one, this I reviewed this recently, the CeraVe came out with uh, hydrating sunscreens, uh, SPF 30 and SPF 50. Uh, both of them are ones to pass up. They don't have any concerning ingredients. However, the white cast in them is just so, so noticeable and it's almost impossible to really work well with. And to be honest, towards the end of the day, it left my face feeling super uh, dry and like itchy. So I really recommend avoiding this. Although there's a few people from reviews I've read that have liked it. Overall, it's just a pass. So And then Casa Rex shows up on here on the good and the bad. Uh, their new Shield Fit sunscreens. Uh, in my opinion, they're both ones to pass up. Uh, one uses chemical, one uses uh, physical sunscreen. But their Shield Snail Essence has denatured alcohol as the third ingredient and also includes a little bit of fragrance. So when you're using sunscreen, you want to avoid denatured alcohol if you can. And there's certain uh, preservatives that can be used in sunscreens. Methylazoscone. I'm sure I pronounced that wrong, but uh, that's another preservative that's highly uh, 
skin sensitizing, so that's a good thing to avoid, and fragrance uh, when you can avoid it, and essential oils as well. So there's a few things to avoid with sunscreens, but um, for the most part, any of the ones I mentioned earlier on in the review are great, and the last three are probably ones to avoid. Um, and yeah, so stay tuned, and I'll be reviewing the Biore ones, uh, hopefully in the next month, after I have a good month to try them out. I'm excited. I love when new packages come. So anyway, I'm interested if you guys use any of these and what your thoughts are or what your favorite sunscreen is. So leave a comment and let everyone know what it is. And uh, yeah, so if there's any other sunscreens you're interested in, leave me a comment. I've got so many boxes of them. It's so hard to narrow them down, obviously. And each one of them kind of has a different use. I mean, some are great for dry skin. Some are great for oily skin. Some are great because they have a skin tint. Some are great under foundation. Anyway, some are, yeah. Anyway, so leave a comment. Check out nobsbeauty.com. And thank you guys so much.